We don't usually go in for sensationalism here. That's not our thing. Or to denigrate or shame others, individuals. However, the story of Donald Trump has to do with an ancient history for Americans of how they reacted to Benedict Arnold and Trump. I have known for some time that Donald Trump was the reincarnation of Benedict Arnold. However, it really is a time when people need to understand how this works to put this issue to bed and to get this country back on its feet. Thank you. So Jesus, or anyone who has information on this, I've been thinking about what you said yesterday, Jesus, and the day before, about a couple days before, about Trump. And my understanding is that Trump is the reincarnation of Benedict Arnold, uh, who was the most uh, notorious traitor in American history. And he's kind of the poster boy for, for treason, for selling state secrets and turning against his countrymen, and not only his own countrymen in that case, but his former comrades in arms. And so I was wondering about this, and I was thinking, well, did he reincarnate as Donald Trump in order to attempt to redeem his energy? Because everybody... All souls seem to be involved in evolution growth, uh, trying to heal themselves and to resolve issues so that they can go on um, without the burden of, of past history, if you will, to sort of redeem their energy so they get back to ground zero. So did he then come into this lifetime? in order to have an opportunity to redeem his energy and to change the way that he plays, and then he fell back into the same rut, or what? Life is peculiar, isn't it? It's always taking us around and around. The merry-go-round. And every time we go around the merry-go-round, we get a chance to change the way we play. So yes, it is deja vu, in a way. Different names and different faces and different places, as you say. But the same issues come up. And the issue for Trump is the issue of loyalty to his country. And he had to take it on the nose in his last lifetime as Benedict Arnold, which wasn't his last lifetime, but was a lifetime that he lived, in the way that he did decide to play a little fast and loose with his connections in the U.S. Revolutionary Army, you see. And he became the notorious traitor, as you mentioned, who is burned in effigy every year, or hung in effigy, and he will never be redeemed of his sad energy until the people set him free. The people have to set him free. That's why he's here, because the people keep trusting on that man as a traitor. And so they, every year, they even have a traitor roast, you might say, because Benedict Arnold was not actually hanged, you see. One of his confederates was hanged, but he was not hanged, and he lived out his life in foreign countries. And... For a while it was okay, but after a while he began to say, I miss my home in the USA. And that was the day <laughs> that he did say, will they ever forgive me for what I did? Will they ever forgive me what I did to them? And so he came back into his life 
in this life at least, as Donald Trump, who really had no aspirations to be the president of the USA. His only aspiration, you see, was to save the day. He wanted to be the hero of his own story. He wanted to figure out how to get the people to say, Hooray, hooray, it's Donald Trump today. Hooray, hooray, he's the one who's come to save the day. Because he needed to balance out his energy with his past history. When he was the one, they would say, Oh my God, it's Benedict Arnold today. Get out the nooses, get out your bayonets, let's get rid of that guy, and let's hold him up to public ridicule over and over and over again. Let's ridicule that guy. And so today, he's one of the most ridiculous figures you ever did see. Because that's his history. His history is to be ridiculed by the people of the USA. And today, people ridicule him over and over and over again. It's like watching a train wreck in slow motion, as they say. And you can't turn your eyes away, apparently, from this train wreck. It's time for the people to forgive Benedict Arnold and to forgive Donald Trump and to give him what he deserves. Because what he deserves is not for you or me to say. It is for the people of the USA to say. Because they are condemning themselves when they think that they have a choice, you see. They don't have a choice when it comes to Trump. Because they already made their choice long ago. <clears throat> they put him in a position of ridicule. And, of course, he will go down in history as the most ridiculous president there ever did see. So let him be free. Let him be free of anxiety. I don't speak here of whether he should be convicted of crimes and sent to prison. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is turn your eyes away and say, hey, he's had his day and we've had our fun. And now it's time to put away the effigy of Benedict Arnold and to say, he paid his price. He paid the price. We may not have caught him and hung him in his day, but he came back to pay the price for his vice. He came back to be the one who everyone would see as the president of the USA who destroyed it, you see. He destroyed the trust on the presidency. He destroyed the trust on decency, honesty, and integrity in the Republican Party. Because the Republicans, you see, were the ones who hung him in effigy through the years. Because they were the ones who learned to hate him, you see, in the way that they would hate his progeny. In other words, the Republicans came to hate the people who were honest and wise and would open their eyes and say, what can I do for you today? Because the Republicans had to become what they hated, you see. They had to become what they hated. They hated traitors. And they would hunt them down and kill them, you see, through their trust on being so high and mighty that they could stand in the pulpit and say, hey, we know the way, we know the way, and they don't know the way. 
They don't know the way. They are lost. And like you say, Steph, now they can say they are found because we have found them. We have found them because they have revealed themselves. They stood up and said, we support anarchy. We support Donald Trump, which is the same thing as saying that we support anarchy. We support the destruction of the USA. And so they became what they hated, you see. So don't hate is my thoughts on this. Just love your neighbor and say, I'm sorry you played that way. Now, of course, you'll have to pay for the way you play because we all do. We all do. We all have to pay for the way we play. When we give up fighting reality, when we accept reality, when we accept that we will always become what we hate, you see, because it's just a mirage and we cease to exist in reality, that is to say, if you trust on delusion, you will be deluded. And that is the nature of hatred, you see. And so when you can forgive your neighbor, when you can forgive Benedict Arnold and say, he played in a very loose way with the people of the USA. And you can forgive Trump and said he played with a very loose way with the people of the USA and just say, go away, go away. You're done now. Your story is over. Your story is over and you can go out to Clover because we don't care what happens to you. We don't care what happens to you because we know God has it in hand and that God sent you here to give you a chance to clear your name, you see. And instead of clearing your name, you added to the shame and blame that comes to those who trust on the ego. So don't trust on the ego, just let it go. Because the ego is the trust that you will always go in the same direction. Because the energy that pulls you is the energy of hatred, you see. And so, where the energy of hatred will go is where the ego will go. Trust on love for your brother. Open the door for another and allow them to open the door for you to a world of peace and harmony. It's over, people. It's over. Donald Trump has been exposed for who he is. It's over. And now, he can rest in clover wherever he ends up because that is where he will end up and he will suffer the consequences of his choices, you see, because that is the simplicity of God energy. That God energy will always come back to you in the way that you let others do what they need to do because you are the one who decides. You are the one who decides who you are. You are the one who decides how you will play. You are the one who decides for eternity. I know there was something about him stealing, selling state secrets, but is there anything more that needs to be said about this. No. It is done. It is over. He is done. He is over. And he will have many opportunities to redeem his trust on love, you see, when he comes back in his next lifetime and the lifetimes after that. He will have many opportunities to choose differently so that he can grow and come to know that he is the captain of his own ship and he will be the master of his fate, you see. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.